Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully you're having a great day. In today's video, we are going to be creating the buy system for the shop GUI in our simulator. As always, if this video does help you guys out or you guys do enjoy it and want to see more Roblox development content, make sure you guys hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on. Additionally, I have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this video, there's a link down below in the description. You guys can go there, click the link and support me. With that being said, let's get into it. So the buy system isn't too relatively hard. What we're going to do is we're going to go into our shop. We're going to go into our star GUI, the shop, open up the manager, and of course, open up the handler. And we actually want to make a brand new function. So we're going to say function shop dot buy. And then additionally, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to the top and we're going to want to create a brand new variable called clicked item. And what we're going to do is when we click an item, we actually call this click function right here. So we are going to say clicked item equals self. So now whenever this function is called clicked item will be set to self, which is whatever item that we actually click. What we then want to do is we want to go over to the handler and we want to find our buy button. And we actually did not initialize the buy button inside of here. So let's do that first. Let's go back over to manager and we should have the info frame. So let's go ahead and grab the info frame because that holds the buy button. And then we we will throw that inside of the handler. So we have the frame, the info frame, and then let me also just locate just to verify. So info frame and then buy button. Okay. So we're going to come down here and we're going to say local buy button equals info frame dot buy button. There we go. Perfect. And then we will call that. So we're going to say buy button dot mouse button one click connect. And then we will create a brand new function inside of here, of course. And this time we're going to say manager dot buy boom, just like that. So just to make sure this works all correctly, let's go ahead and say print clicked item dot name. And then when we click buy, it should actually print out some name. Let's go ahead, click French fry, click buy, and we can see French fry was printed. Let's do it with French fry two. And we can see, okay, perfect. French fry two is now being printed. So let's go right here. Fire regular was printed and for ranks, green noob was printed. That's exactly what we wanted. Awesome. Now what we want to do is we want to actually go inside of a replicated storage inside of the remotes folder. And this time we actually want to make a remote function. We're going to name this remote function shop buy. And if you wanted to, you could even create a folder and name that shop to sort of keep everything organized. I guess I will since we have more than one remote for the shop. So we'll rename this to shop and then drag both those inside of there. Now for the shop open, we actually have to change that inside of of scriptable objects. So we got to say remotes.shop.shop open. There we go. And then inside of the handler, we also have to say remotes.shop.shop open. Perfect. And then let's go back to the manager. And this time we are going to say, do we have remotes initialized in here? We don't. Let's go ahead and initialize remotes inside of here. So there we go. We've got remotes and we're now going to say remotes.shop.shop buy. So there we go. And let's actually initialize that to a variable. So we're going to say local result equals remotes.shop.buy shop.buy. And then we're actually going to say invoke server, which is a little bit different, but we're doing that because it's a remote function and we're going to pass through clicked items. So this might be a little bit complicated or you might not understand exactly what's going on. But remember, we're creating a remote function, which is a little bit different than a remote event, which we've worked with quite often. So what a remote function does, it's a little bit different. And you can see why are we setting it to a variable? That's a little bit weird, right? We're basically going to almost do sort of what we do with a remote event, but we're passing through data to the server and then the server is actually going to return data back to us when we call shop buy we're going to pass through the clicked item so remember when we actually click an item we set the clicked item to something and we set that to whatever item we actually click then when we click the buy button we're actually going to call this remote function and we're going to pass through the clicked item so whatever item we have selected in the shop that we want to buy we're going to pass that item through and then the server is going to return something to us and that will be the result so now we actually have to accept this information we're getting and then we have to return something so let's go to server script service and let's go ahead and create a brand new script and we can rename this to shop manager handler server i don't know I'll, I'll just name this shop server so that it's like least confusing when you're looking at all the things up top here I, it really doesn't matter whatever you want to name it you can name it whatever then what we're going to do is we're going to say local replicated storage equals game get service replicated storage there we go and then we're going to say local remotes equals replicate storage find first child remotes and then we are going to say remotes dot shop dot shop 
by, and then this time we're saying dot on server invoke. And we're actually gonna set that to equals function. And the function we are gonna get passed through the player argument, so player. And we're also going to get the clicked item as well. So we're gonna say item, and we can set that to any, it really doesn't matter. So there we go. So let's just test this out and let's just actually print the item dot name. So we can print the item that we're actually getting passed through. And let me drag this over here. So we're kind of all together. We have all of our stuff together. Okay, so when we click the buy button, we can see that we actually call the buy function. So inside of the buy function, we're not gonna print this anymore, just so we can test that our print does actually work on the server side of stuff. And this time we're calling the remote function with the actual clicked item. So let's go ahead and start this up and see if that works. So let's go ahead, click French fry, click buy. And we can see that the shop server online six has printed French fry. Let's try with French fry two. And that all works perfectly exactly how we want it. Awesome. We now have communication between the client and the server. Now let's see if we can get communication between the client to the server and back to the client. So we're just going to go right down here and we're just going to say print result. And then let's go back to the shop server script and we're going to say return true. So now it should print out true anytime we actually call this and it should also print the item name as well. So let's go ahead and start that. All right. So we click French fry. We click buy. And we can see French fry has been printed by the shop server and true has been printed by the manager on line 43, which is the actual result. So now what we can do with this function is we can look at the item name. We can say stuff like, does the player have enough money or does the player already own this? And then based on that information, we can then return different results. And then of course, with those different results, we can change and modify certain things about our shop. Like say, if we did successfully equip the item or if the result is successfully equipped or something similar to that regard, we can then change the buy button to equipped or unequipped and stuff like that. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's go to shop server. And the first thing that we actually wanna check is if the item can actually be found. What we want to do is we actually want to get all of those config files that we have. So let's go ahead and just copy this directly from our manager file and we can bring that right over to here. So there we go. We now have the config folder and all the different configs. Let's also make this a little bit more specific as well. So when we actually call this, we're going to pass through the player. We're going to pass through the item and let's also pass through the category. And that will once again be any, well, that'll actually be a string. So then we will go to the manager. Let's go to clicked item. And then this time we're going to make a brand new variable below clicked item. And we're going to say local current shop. And then what we're going to do, we're going to come down to shop.new and we're going to say current shop equals and then shop and make sure it is all lowercase. So that's the exact shop that we have right here. So then current shop will be set to either food, DNA or rank. And then let's go back up to where we actually call shop by and we'll pass through the clicked item and we'll also pass through the current shop. Perfect. So then what we're going to do is pretty much the same thing that we did down here when we create a brand new shop, we are going to get this list variable right here. So let's do that. Let's literally just copy and paste that directly into the shop.server. So we're going to say local list equals if shop equals food and all that, then we'll set those specific configs. We can't even change the category to shop just to kind of keep consistency. So there we go. We're going to say if shop equals food, then tool config, else if DNA, then DNA config and rank. So we got all that. Perfect. One of the things that we want to do is we want to check if the item that the player passed through actually exists. If you're unfamiliar with how client to server data works and stuff like that, the client can say be a hacker or somebody malicious, for instance, and they could actually pass information through to the server from the client, which isn't actually true. So they could pass through an item which doesn't exist, and that'll make the script on the server side actually error. And I have heard, I'm not exactly too familiar with this, but I understand that we can easily prevent this, is that if somebody is constantly causing errors on one of your scripts, it could actually cause your game to crash and that could also cause a lot of other issues. First of all, let's actually check if the item exists to prevent any possible errors. We're going to create a brand new function. We're going to say local function item exists. Hopefully I spelled that right. And then we are going to accept the item name as a string and the shop as a string as well. Perfect. And actually, we're just going to take this list variable right here. We're just going to delete that from the original function and bring it right up here. And let's also rename this function to get item. So now this function will actually return an item if it can be found. If it can't be found, it'll return nil. And then we can just cancel the whole function right there and prevent any errors. So then we're basically just going to create a for loop just exactly how we did here. So we could literally copy this if we wanted to, and we could paste that right here. We're going to say for tool name, comma, tool table in pairs, list do. And then we're going to say if item name equals 
tool name then return and i guess we'll just return the tool table we might change that eventually but that's fine for right now or actually i don't know if we're going to use the tool name but we can return two things at once so we'll just return both the tool name and the tool table so that we get both if we actually need it so this is really simple we're going to get the list at first then we're going to loop through it we're going to check the item name and we're going to say if the item name equals tool name then we will return both the tool name and the tool table because we identified what tool we're actually wanting to use so then we just got to call that down here we're going to say local tool name comma tool table equals get item we're going to pass through the item dot name and comma the shop as well and there we go that should work let's go right down here and this time we're going to print out tool name and we'll also print out tool table and then we'll also delete this print dot item name and then we'll start it up and see if that works so click french fry click buy and we can actually see french fry 2 has been printed and the table has been printed as well that works exactly how we wanted it awesome let's also try this with dna it works with dna awesome awesome Awesome, awesome, sweet. So that works perfectly, great. All right, so now that we identify our tool name and our tool table, we're pretty much done with the actual item data that we get sent from the client as well as the shop. We might use it a little bit later on, but I don't think so. Now remember, when we actually create a brand new item within our shop, we set a couple of different properties. We set the name, the display name, the food, the multiplier, and the price. You might think, well, with our shop server, we could just use the item.price since we're given the item. But remember, like I said, data can be manipulated that is sent from the client to the server what we're doing here is we're basically verifying that this data is valid and we're actually getting all of the stuff on our own from the config files that we have we're not trusting the data from the player is valid or correct we're basically only using the item dot name then we're finding the config information for that specific item name based on our information from our actual config files that nobody else can manipulate so then when we actually get that we're getting the official tool name and we're getting the official tool table that comes along with that so that's why we never want to trust the client because they can manipulate data and really mess things up. So then let's make sure that we actually have the tool name and the tool table. So we're going to say if tool name and tool table then, and that'll just make sure that these are not nil. Oh, for some reason, it always wants to say tool table instead of tool name. So there we go. If tool name and tool table, then let's go ahead and make a check for if the player has the item equipped already. And the way that we're going to do that is by using some of the data that we already use. So in our new function, we can come right down to here. We can actually just copy and paste this already if statement that we made so what this does is it checks the shop and it checks the tool name and it checks if the player has already equipped it this is the way that we already actually check if the player has equipped the tool or not so let's just copy that and then we'll come over to here and we will paste it and let's also actually just make a new function i like to keep a lot of the things into their own functions rather than throwing it all inside of here because i feel like that's a way better way to say organized so we're going to say local function has equipped as equipped and then we will accept the item name as a string and we'll also accept the shop as a string as well so then let's just copy this and paste it directly into there perfect and then we also have to accept the player as well so i'll accept the player as the first argument and there we go awesome so now let's change tool name to item actually i'll just change the item name originally to tool name so that's all good we don't have to worry about that and then what we're going to say is if any of these are true then return true else return false so inside of our if tool name and tool table we are going to check if the player has a tool equipped so we're going to say if has equipped and we're going to pass through the player we're going to pass through the tool name and we're going to pass through the shop so there we go we're going to say if the player has equipped then return unequipped so if the player clicks the buy button and they already have the item equipped then they want to unequip it and most likely the button will not say buy anymore it'll also say unequipped as well so they're sort of clicking an unequip button instead that's how we have to think about it it might be a little bit confusing but we're using the buy button to handle multiple things we're using that to handle the equip unequip buy and i think that should be it so anyway if the player does have it equipped then we will return unequipped and we also need to make an unequipped function as well so we're going to say local function unequipped and the only thing that we're going to accept here is the shop as a string that's the only thing that we actually need to accept so what we're going to do is we're then going to say unequipped we'll call that we'll pass through the shop we'll just copy this because we're going to sort of use this if statement if shop equals food then and then we're going to do player.inventory.equip tool.value equals the default value and the default value for this we can check whatever the first one is we always do the first one so we could just say french fry equals french fry oh we also need to get the player as well 
but then we can just delete this and then we can make an else if statement so then we can say else if and then it's going to be shop equals dna and then we're just going to copy this and we're going to say equals and for dna that would be retro regular so equals retro regular else and then we're going to say equipped rank equals and for the rank we're going to do noob so then we're going to say equals noob perfect awesome and now this is really unformatted and looks terrible so let's make sure that we format it good okay that should all be good and then we also want to accept the player as well and i like to accept the player as the first argument always so let's go ahead and say player and the data type is player so there we go and let's also make sure that we pass through the player as well as the shop and there we go oh i see what my mistake was so let's just delete that one end and then we need to make the else if closer and then boom there we go that should all be good sweet so i also want to show you gameplay of why we're doing what we're doing so what we basically just did is if we click unequip it goes back to the first default item that you can own so that's why when we click unequip it goes back to the first one if we click like equip for example once again then we click unequip it goes back to the first one that we actually own that's why we made it this way so that it resets to the default one that we actually own so before checking if the player actually has it equipped we want to check if the player actually owns the item already what we can say is we could say local function owns item and we can accept the player and we can accept the tool name as a string and let's also accept the shop as well we're using all the same arguments as the has equipped function as well so there we go we create that function inside of the function is we're going to create a brand new variable and it's going to be directory and we're going to say equals if shop equals food then and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to get the directory for owned tools owned tools else if shop equals dna then owned dna nays that we can say else owned ranks so once we have this what we're going to do is we're then going to say return player find first child inventory find first child once again and this time we are going to do the directory so we're going to do inventory and then let's say for example the shop is food we're going to do inventory then own tools and then we actually want to find find first child and this time we're going to find the tool name dot value and that should return if the player actually owns the tool or not so if we start the game real quick i can show you the exact value that we're looking for so we're going to go to players inventory own dna's own ranks or own tools and let's say own tools for example and then we're actually getting the tool name and then we're finding the tool name for example french fry french fry 2 or french fry 3 and then we're returning the value so that's going to be either true or false so now we have the owns item function and we're going to actually use that down here so we're going to say if owns item and we're going to pass through the player the, the tool name and the shop and we're going to say if owns item and then we can actually put if has equipped inside of there as well because the player obviously has to own the tool to have it equipped and then we're going to say if owns item we'll say else so then the player does not own the item and here is where we can actually check the price and if the player actually has enough money to purchase it else if player dot and we are using coins so we're going to say player dot leader stats dot coins so we're going to say player dot leaderstats.coins.value is greater than or equal to tool table dot price then so this will actually check if the player has enough money to purchase the tool and what we'll do is we will return purchased and then we also need to create purchase function and now we'll make an else statement and this time we will return not enough money so now we handle if the player does not have enough money we return not enough money we return purchased if the player has enough money and can purchase it otherwise if the player already owns the tool and they have it equipped then we're going to unequip it so then we also need to make an else inside of if has equipped we'll say else and this time we actually need to create equip function so for the equip function it's really simple we're just we're just actually going to copy the unequip function and rename it to equip and once again we want to accept the player and the shop but before the shop we also want to accept the tool name and that's going to be a string of course just like how we have for has equipped and this time what we're going to do is rather than setting this for example french fry retro regular or noob we're actually just going to set the each of these two tool names so there we go now depending on if it's food dna or ranks it'll set that to whatever we pass through as the tool name and then when we actually call it we are going to say equip and we're going to pass through the player we're going to pass through the tool name and we're going to pass through the shop and then we also want to return equipped okay that works perfect so we can take this comment out and now we need to actually create a purchase function which is pretty easy so i'm just going to go ahead and create another function up here local function purchase we're going to accept the player we'll accept the tool name and we will accept the tool table so there we go and then we'll 
what we're going to do is we're going to say player dot leader stat we can just copy this so player dot leader stats dot coin dot value so player dot leader stats dot coins dot value minus equals so that'll subtract whatever we give to it so we're going to say tool table dot price so that'll actually subtract the price from it which is exactly what we want so once we remove the money from them we actually have to give them the tool basically what we're doing is sort of something that we kind of did in owns tool by checking it so we have to go inside their inventory we have to go into the specific directory then we have to find that tool name and we have to set the value to true so let's just go ahead and copy this directory up here and then we also need to accept the shop as well so in the purchase function we're going to say shop and we are going to have that as a string and then let's actually initialize the variable on the first line because that's what I like to do. So there we go. We got the directory. And this time we can copy this entire line right here. And then we're going to paste that inside of here. And then what we're saying is player, find inventory, find the directory based off of the shop, then find the tool and then the value. And we're going to set that to true. So there we go. That's how we now say that the player does own this specific item. And then we need to call the function down here. So we need to say purchase. Then we need to give it all the information. So tool name, tool table, shop. And then we also want to equip the tool for the player as well. So we're going to say equip. We got to pass through the tool name and we got to pass through the shop. There we go. So the player purchases the item, which purchasing it will remove the money from the player. And then it will also set the value of that tool inside of their inventory to true. And then we also equip the tool for the player and we return purchase exactly what we wanted. Awesome. So now that we have all this set up on our server, we actually have to set this up for the manager. So let's go back to the manager. And this time we go back to the buy function. And now we have to do something for every single one of the possible results that we could have. Let's say, for instance, the first result is not enough money. Money. let's go ahead and copy that and we're going to say if result equals not enough money then and now we want to do something so the way that they go about it when you try to purchase an item and you don't have enough money is it closes the shop and it opens up a shop where you can buy money for robux and then it also sends you a purchase prompt we will do this in a later episode just because that's a lot more complicated than just building this gui so what we're going to say for now is just add a comment and say add later because that is a lot more in depth. We can also just print out not enough money just to know that we are getting this return to us. Next, if the player clicks the equip button and the item does get equipped, the text gets changed to equipped and the text button gets to change to unequipped. So let's do that. So let's check how we actually do equipped and we say equipped right like that. Okay, so we're gonna then say inside of here, else if result equals equipped, then and now let's do something. So let's go back to our GUI and play around with the buy button a little bit so we can make sure that it looks exactly how we want it to look. For the background color, normally it's green. We're gonna want that to be red. So let's copy the RGB 236, 47, and 60. We can go back to the manager and if we do get equipped, we can say info buy button dot background color three equals color three dot from RGB. And we can say 236, 47, six zero there we go that'll set the background color to red and then we're going to say info buy button dot text equals unequip there we go perfect so that will set the buy button to red and it'll also say unequipped and then below this let's just add a comment for right now and we need to refresh the gui for equipped to display equipped item and we will do that but we'll get to that in a little bit let's go ahead and look at the other returns that we could possibly get so then we also have unequipped so then we're going to say else if result equals unequipped then and we're going to basically do the opposite so rather than it's saying unequip and being red we're going to change it back to a green and i don't know let's just say that this is the green zero two five five and zero and that'll be the green and then we're going to say equip just like that so we've got unequipped we have equipped we have purchased let's go ahead and do purchase and i think purchase is really simple i think we could say right here else if result equals equipped or result or result equals purchase because they basically do the exact same thing when you purchase something it'll automatically equip it so it'll change the info buy button from green to red and then it'll also say unequipped and then we also want to refresh the gui as well so they basically both do the exact same thing and then it looks like we covered everything because we already have not enough money so now we need to improve this a little bit so now let's go down to the click function and what we actually have to do here is when we click an item we want to check if the player actually owns the item or if the item is equipped and then we'll set the buy button respectively to what it needs to be such as equip unequip buy or anything else like that so let's go back to the shop server and let's see where we check where we already have these checks so we can check if we already have it equipped we can literally copy this function 
and we can paste that directly into the manager. We might have to make a few changes, but that's fine. So we're going to say local function has equipped. Let's also check if the player owns the item. So let's copy this, paste that right into there. There we go. So then what we can say is we can come down here. We can say if owns item, then we'll pass through the player self dot name and we'll pass through the current shop. And then there we go. So we're checking if the player owns the item then, and then let's check if the player has it equipped. So we're going to say if has equipped player self dot name current shop and if the player has it equipped so then we'll set the button to red and we'll say unequipped else we will do the opposite we'll set it to green and we will say equipped so there we go and then also if the player does not own the item then we're going to say else and we will set the button to green and we will say buy. So if the player does not own the item, we're going to set it to buy and we're going to set the color to green. But if the player does own the item, if the player has it equipped, then we'll set the button to unequip and we'll set it to red. Or if the player does not have it equipped, then we will set the button to equipped and we will set the color to green. So that should all work out pretty well. Let's go ahead and start the game and see if this looks good. We open up the shop, we click on the tool and we can see buy. So we're getting an error on line 61, which is right here. So I think what we're going to do is because we already actually initialized player up here, we don't really need to do it again so let's actually just remove the player argument from all of this and we don't actually need to pass the player through because we already initialize it and then when we actually call these we also don't need to pass player through as well because it's unnecessary oh and i guess i literally typed plug in here instead of players so that was also probably really where the issue came from but that's fine we don't need to type the player anyway so we might as well just not even include it now when we start the game up let's check it again so we click on the equipped french fry and we see we now have unequip which is great we now click on french fry 2 and we can verify we own that by going into inventory own tools and french fry 2 and we don't actually own that yet so if we click on buy we'll see what happens we can see we don't actually have enough money which is exactly what it should do perfect now if we go to french fry and we click unequip let's see what happens okay it says equipped but it should actually say unequipped still because this should never actually be able to be unequipped that's okay though this should actually fix itself when we refresh the gui in a couple of minutes and we'll get to that soon now let's also give ourselves some money so that we can actually purchase this and to see if that goes through so i'm just going to go to player data set the default amount of coins to 50 and reset the data store so there we go we should now start off with 50 coins yes we now have 50 coins so let's go ahead and buy the french fry too and we can see that it has been bought and it has been equipped perfect the only other thing that we do need to do is we actually need to have the item be equipped in our inventory down below so we will get to that but we can now see let's go ahead and equip the first one and we can see that we can also equip the second one because we still own that so we just have to update the gui for this equipped right here and it's looking pretty good and then also if we unequip this we can see that we now have the french fry number one equipped which is great so let's go to the shop server and for equip we also need to equip the item to players inventory add the item to player's inventory because we'll need to make sure that we do that so now what we're going to do is inside of the manager above shop.gui above shop.buy we're going to make a brand new function and we're going to call this refresh gui for right now we might think of a better name later and then what we want to do is we actually want to pass through a specific item name as a string so then what we're going to do is we're going to say for underscore child in i pairs container get children do and we're going to say if child is a text button button then so basically what we're doing is we're going through the container we're checking if it is a text button which all of the text buttons which are all the templates which are all the normal text buttons that we're using for every single individual item then we want to check the name of the text button so we're going to say if child.name equals the item name then and then what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of the template we're going to go inside of holder and then we're going to get the equipped text label and we actually need to say equals equals so there we go we're then going to say child dot holder dot equipped dot visible equals true else and then we can just copy this and we could say false we're checking each of the text buttons we're seeing if the text button is the item name that we just clicked on or that we just clicked equipped on and then if it is then we will set the equip text to true otherwise we'll set that to false and that's perfect so then we say refresh ui and we call that right here so we say refresh GUI and we pass through the clicked item dot name and that should work how we want it. But what we also have to do is we have to come down to new when we create all these. So let's set the clone dot name 
equals and it'll equal the tool name so that should work so let's go ahead and start it up and then let's go ahead and open the shop let me go to my player the gui shop let's check the container and now we see we have a name that's french fry french fry 2 french fry 3 that works perfectly so now we can actually make that comparison and then let's go ahead and click on this we can say unequipped and now we can see that it was unequipped but we still need to fix that a little bit that's not what it should do let's say equipped and okay the equip text has changed over perfect let's say unequipped that still needs to be adjusted as well so this isn't too hard of a fix we basically just have to call the refresh ui when we do the unequip but this time let's go back to shop.server and we basically need to call it with one of these values here so we can just copy this and then we can go back down to here local item name equals and then we're gonna say if current shop so if current shop instead of shop so if current shop equals food then french fry else if sh current shop equals dna then retro regular else and we will say noob so there we go let's make this look a little bit better and then let's also delete this and then we will pass through the item name so that should work how we want it let's go ahead and try that and see if it does work so let's go ahead equip french fry 2 unequip it and we can see perfect it went back to french fry now let's unequip french fry and see so we need to fix the button click but the equip still works fine so that's pretty good so let's go back to the shop server and let's look for the unequip okay so we have unequip so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if tool name does not equal and then we want to get the three default ones so we're gonna say does not equal french fry and tool.name does not equal retro regular and tool name does not equal noob then and then we will do this so there we go and that should work i don't think we have to do anything else with that so basically it's just checking if we unequip the default tools so if we unequip the default tools then it does nothing which is perfect that's exactly what we want but if we unequip that tool for example it goes back to the default tool sweet that's exactly what we wanted awesome we can also test this out with dna so we can unequip that it goes back to the first one sweet and then let's also close the shop reopen open it and make sure that it works so yes that does work and now we can see we don't have enough money to actually buy that one but that's fine so sweet these all work perfectly fine that's exactly what we wanted awesome so the last two things that we need to do is when we equip a tool we need it to go into the player's inventory and then we also have to set up the ranks shop as well for the ranks to actually work but i think the ranks will come in another episode just because there's a lot more in-depth stuff that we actually need to do for that so that'll probably come in the future anyways equipping the tool isn't too hard we actually already did it when we had when we created the player data so we have this give tool function right here where we basically get the equip tool and then we clone it and give it to the player's backpack so that's what we're basically going to do we can copy this we can go back to shop.server and we can paste it right above purchase then let's go ahead and get the server storage because we need to so local server storage equals game get service server storage just like that this time we don't have to actually have this repeat here at all because it's just unnecessary so there we go and then inside of the purchase function we can say if shop equals food then and then we'll call the give tool and we will call the player but what we also want to do is we want to say for underscore child in i pairs and we could say player dot backpack find first child get children so we'll get all of the items inside of the player's backpack and then we are just going to destroy them and then once we destroy all the items which currently exist in the player's inventory we're then going to get the current equip tool and then we'll clone that from the server storage and put that inside of the player's backpack so that should all work flawlessly hopefully so let's go to food let's go to french fry let's go to unequip that's fine that works perfectly it shouldn't unequip let's go to french fry 2 equip and that didn't work well let's see why ah of course because i'm putting this inside of the purchase method and we actually don't need to put that inside of the purchase method we need to put that inside of the equip method so let's go ahead and do that let's go back to equip and we can see right here let's go ahead and put that inside of here we got to move the function we got to move the give tool function above equip so there we go and that will hopefully work let's check it out so we open up the shop and we try to equip the fry three for example and boom there we go it works perfectly so let's unequip this and we can see we still have fry three let's go ahead and fix that so what we're gonna do is we are going to move this function up once again and then when we call unequip let's also call this as well and that should perfectly solve that problem that we had so let's start the game up again let's go ahead and equip three now let's unequip three and boom it went back to french fry let's go ahead and equip two then three 
boom, perfect, unequip, and that works all exactly how it should. Sweet. So there we go. So that works all perfectly. That's exactly what we wanted. Amazing. So yeah, in the future, we will do the system for the ranks, but for right now, we pretty much have gotten almost everything done. We just have to do the buy all button, the arrows, and then we're almost pretty much done with the shop. Anyway, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we have made a lot of amazing progress on the shop in this video. If you guys did enjoy this video and this video did help you guys out, make sure you guys smash the like button. If you guys are new around here, you guys want to see some more Roblox development content, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this video, there's a link down below in the description. You guys can go check it out and support me. Anyway, I hope that you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.